All right. <laughs> We're live. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Ron and Amanda coming from 701 South Poplar Street this morning. You know, uh, someone said, a friend of mine said, I must not be able to give a message by myself because I've had a teammate every Sunday, you know, third Sunday. And I've got one this morning, my beautiful wife, Amanda, at least for a few minutes in the early. But we just wanted to come on a little early and, um, and you know, just... Uh, Say hello. Uh, we've got about four minutes before we begin in earnest, and uh, just uh, let us know that you're out there, and say good morning in the in the chat session, the comments, and uh, God bless you guys this morning. Good morning. Hey, Lisa. I see you're watching. We're a little early. She's always the early bird. <laughs> Definitely expect everybody to be dressed in their church clothes this morning, showered. Glenn Brizendine, God bless you, brother. I was hoping you would tune in. I'm going to talk about you today, so you better stay, uh, you better listen, because uh, I'm going to mention you this morning, okay? Good morning, Mama. Good to see y'all. I'm just reading scripture this morning, then I'll get out of here. See a lot of folks. I see some other, other Pfizer buddy, John York. I see him. Timmy Barber. <laughs> Hope you're good, doing good, Timmy. That beautiful little girl of yours. <laughs> Good morning, B, the doll. I feel like we're on a talk show, like we're Regis and Kathy Lee or something. That's pretty old, though. I guess Regis and Kathy Lee are way in the past. Yeah. Maybe you're Hoda, Kathy Lee and Hoda. I don't know. That's who it does now. That's I don't who know. It talks now. John York did say is he's glad we got some good-looking people on here today. Thank you, John. <laughs> I'm going to, um, again, just wait a few more minutes. Uh, be love for you to, to let us know where you're watching from today. If you're watching from far, I've got some, we got some friends across the country and I've even got some friends out of the country that maybe someone's, uh, looking this morning. I see folks all the way from the far regions of Robertsonville <laughs> are on there this morning. Good morning, guys. Williamston. Oak City. Yep. <laughs> There's Willie Keel. <laughs> Willie, appreciate your guys coming and, and doing some uh, cutting on the yard this this week, late in the week. Great job as always. Morning, Pamela and Hope. I feel like we should do this every morning so we can say good morning to everybody. Good morning, Lily Webb. <laughs> Mr. Todd. Good morning. I will let you know it was Todd Kraft that said that I could not uh, do this by myself. Because I always had a teammate, so apparently <laughs> he's telling the truth. Probably so. Oh. Andrew and Jacob have tuned in from the other room. <laughs> we hope everybody's just doing well during this quarantine time. Um, trying to do the best the best that we can as far as not going out. Um, I know some of our family took a trip. Had to go to Tarboro yesterday morning and, and you know we wore our masks and and we did have some thank you guys out there who are making masks for folks to have mm -hmm. as well. And uh, just encouraged everybody to be to be as to be as safe as you can. And um, there are a lot of folks that have to go out for different reasons, some for work, other things still. I'm I personally have to go out for work a little bit here and there as as clients will allow. And so um, just encourage you guys to be cautious during that time. Yeah, do I do have a very good helper this week, Todd? Thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Hannah. All right. Okay, we're gonna get um, we're gonna go ahead and get get started this morning. Uh, just good morning to everybody again. I'm gonna give you a couple reminders today. Those who were able to pick up a few things um, from your church building, we left some things there. Uh, a palm, which you may be able to see one in the background between. Amanda and I, uh, you may have your palm this morning. You have uh, left you some instructions if you were to pick those up. Just going to make quick note. You should, you, maybe you've got some of these. If not, you can uh, you can look it up. Just Google how to make a palm leaf cross. And I took one, what's called a frond, which is a really cool word. A frond. No, it's, the whole thing's a frond. This is a leaf. Okay, we'll call that a leaf. And if you've got a short leaf, you're going to make a tiny cross. It's, it's kind of difficult to... To do the first time, but you'll get you'll be a pro if you you practice on a few 
So you can make that if you've got a palm this morning, a, uh, a palm leaf cross. So that's for you guys. Um, also, I'll let you know the, the conclusion this morning, which we should be here about 30 minutes total, but at the end, we're going to have um, Holy Communion together. So those that um, were able to pick up, you may have, again, some communion liturgy. I will say that in doing this the way we're doing it today, we're basically breaking with Methodist tradition on the way that communion is is held in the places and the times and, and who's serving it and who's blessing it and things like that. Um, and uh, we are in unusual circumstances, and I believe it is important to have Holy Communion together. So those who are willing to join with us today, please do. The Bible says to take, uh, make sure we're taking communion, communion in a worthy manner, and uh, which, which the reference really means that we should understand what it is, that it is special. And so make it special. Uh, make it something where you sense that you're taking the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that was broken for your sin, uh, that was, uh, he bled for you, he died for you, and realize that it's not an ordinary meal. And so it is a special time. So even though we break with um, Methodist tradition a little bit today, we do not break with biblical tradition. Jesus said to do this as often as you get together in remembrance of me. So that's what we encourage you to do in the spirit of today when we do that at the end of our time together. So uh, also one final thing before I ask Amanda to read our psalm for today is that on Friday, uh, this coming Friday, will be Good Friday, which means um, and that's the day we, we, we remember the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And so being that we can't have a Good Friday service or can't really legally or safely gather together on our own, me and a couple of friends are going to be putting, we have a cross, we'll be in the back of a pickup truck. I very well might have a bullhorn by then. <laughs> and uh, we're going to travel through the communities of Hobgood and Kanita. Uh, between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. on Good Friday with a cross. And we'll be speaking to you from the back of the truck. So uh, be on the lookout. We're going to try to visit as many folks that are connected to our two churches of Hobby and Canada as we possibly can. If you especially want to have a visit or know someone that is near you that, that would, uh, let me know that. Just send me a message on Facebook or a text or an email or something like that. And we will do our best to make sure that we visit you guys on Good Friday. So with that being said... I'm going to ask Amanda if you would read our scripture for today. All right. Good morning. From Psalm 118. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Amanda. She's going to um, go watch in the other room with our kids and join with them in Holy Communion at the end as well. So uh, just to keep in mind, never thought I would be using my um, TV tray as my pulpit or uh, have a palm or on a TV tray or the Holy Communion elements on, um, on my desk in my office. So uh, again, we are um, we're going through a difficult time. And uh, we're just a few weeks in, and uh, my prayer continues to be that um, that um, God's going to bless us. God's going to heal this world. He's going to heal this nation. Um, he's going to bring us through, and uh, and I believe He will. Uh, turn your cares into prayers. I heard that just the other day. Cast your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Which I can I can simplify that as turn your cares into prayers. Hit your knees and uh, call upon the name of the Lord. 
and ask him to be our deliverer and uh, ask him what he can teach us through this time. And um, again, just so glad to be here with you guys today. If you want to gather some communion elements, I've got a small glass of a little bit of juice in it, and I've got a club cracker as my communion elements today. So I don't want you to be shy if you don't have juice or a piece of bread. Um, food and drink of really any sort will, will suffice uh, for today. So if you'd like to gather those things now, we'll use those together uh, at the end. So I want to... Um, I want to talk to you today and uh, in just a moment with our scripture, but I want to pray together with us for, before we begin. If you will, bow your heads where you are and let's pray together this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you today and uh, we are expectant. God, we are definitely afraid. Lord, we are definitely concerned. Lord, I, would be, I wouldn't be a stretch to say that a lot of us are dealing with anxiety and stress and uh, depression and loneliness and, Lord, restlessness and... Um, boredom and all these many things, God. But Lord, we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, we know that you are our rock and our redeemer, God, and that we can put our trust and our hope in you. And God, that you are going to teach us something through this time. And Lord, that you're going to show yourself to be good once again, as you always do. I thank you, Lord, for every person that is watching today, that you, Lord, I'm thankful that they were able to connect with us and thankful for this technology that exists. We pray for their families, God. I thank you, Lord, that uh, we have come into Holy Communion together today through uh, through Facebook and ask God that you would, again, guide my voice. Lord, allow me to get out of the way today and let your words speak into the hearts and the minds of all of our people today. Amen. How many of you guys out there are watching or have watched Tiger King, Tiger King on Netflix. Number one show on Netflix trending uh, is definitely a product of the quarantine. I will say if you have watched it and, and you are ashamed to say that you have been watching it, don't be because I have watched it too. We got sucked into that. It is, uh, it is tragic, uh, tragic uh, people and, and tragic story in, the, uh, in every sense of the word. So, uh, but there's a character in it named uh, Joe Exotic. And Joe Exotic is, is the, the main character. He is the, he is the Tiger King. And he's one of the uh, most unique individuals. Uh, he's, he's, he's definitely a guy. He definitely thinks a lot of himself, and uh, he was—he was somebody you might even call arrogant, and that's the kind of king that the uh, that the world, um, you know, kind of props up and is attracted to in a lot of ways. But uh, Jesus is not not that kind of king. The uh, the title of today's message is called "Get Low," and um, and that can mean a lot of things too. Uh, those of you who spent some time in the in the club in your earlier days, uh, you know what it means to get low. And uh, we're going to talk about something a little bit different in terms of getting low today. Uh, we're going to talk about being humble and talk about being obedient. And what I want to ask is, are those the things that you want to be known for? Um, being humble and, um, and being obedient. And uh, maybe, you want to be, um, maybe you want to be smart, right? Maybe you want to be talented. Maybe you want to be known as even generous, or kind. Um, I know when I left, uh, I left a previous employer. I heard on the back end that that he said um, the Gemma who was our manager said, you know, Ron was just so smart. He's so smart, and I really like that compliment. Like I love, I love the fact that he would think that I was really, really smart. Um, my friend Glenn Brizendine, who I think was at least watching in the early part today. One time we were at a young. Younger guys working at Pfizer Pharmaceuticals together, we had, uh, we had these meetings called POAs, Plan of Action Meetings, and we got to role play and stand up and do things together. And, and one day, Glenn Brizendine, told, Glenn Brizendine told B, he said, you're one of the best communicators that I've ever heard. And uh, that really made me feel good. Thank you for that, Glenn. Uh, you're also an excellent communicator, and you have a beautiful bald head as well. So I want to compliment you the best that I can. Um, but... But if someone would ask me, Ron, are you are you humble? Or they said, Ron, you're really you're really obedient. You know, I would um, I'm not sure that uh, that I would totally appreciate that compliment. Uh, those are definitely not my strong points, especially in terms of of obedience. But today we're going to talk about what it means to be humble, and uh, those that is also tied together, you know, with um, with obedience. Now my wife took my took my scripture away today, so I'm gonna have to pull up 
Matthew 11 here, unless you're going to hear me and uh, and bring it back to me, which is also very possible. Sorry about that, guys. I was not uh, not totally prepared. So maybe Amanda, if you're listening, uh, you could bring <laughs> you could bring my scripture back to me. She's coming to me right now with that, guys. So hang on just a second. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So our scripture today from Matthew 21, excuse me, verses 1 through 11, is when Jesus is entering into Jerusalem um, during the the time of the Passover, and he is being hailed as a um, as a coming king. It says, when they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, "Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied." And a colt with her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who will come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Hosanna really means save us, we pray, or just a shout of acclamation of joy that the people of that time would have used to praise God. Um, when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So it says that Jesus arrived humble. And um, I always, whenever I think of humble, I think of the movie Charlotte's Web, when they were trying to save Wilbur the pig's life, and they were uh, finding words and things that Charlotte could put in the um, in the stall above where where uh, Wilbur lived, and writing words. And one of the words they found was humble, and they didn't know what it meant. But eventually, they found out. They found out that it means low to the ground. And uh, Charlotte said that describes you to a T, Wilbur, low to the ground, because he was a pig, <laughs> of course. And, and when you hear that about Jesus, about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, um, you, hear him, you hear that your king is humble, riding on a donkey. And I hear in that story that Jesus told the people, his disciples, go into the city, and immediately when you arrive there, you're going to find this donkey and the colt, and you take it. And if anyone asks you what's going on, you tell them it's for the Lord, and they'll know what's happening. And so... I just think that's really strange that Jesus would just tell the men without really any information beyond that, go into the city, and when you get there, you're going to see this donkey and this colt and just take it. Because I would have been like, Lord, who am I going to see? Um, want Give me some directions. How are you related to them so that I can understand? Have you told them that I'm coming? And um, I'd want to know just a lot more information about about what we're being asked to do. And... Um, and we don't, we don't get that from Jesus a lot of times. We don't get lots of information. Uh, I believe what I have, oftentimes God will speak into my life, is he'll give me some direction. Very, very broad. Go and do this. Go and do the right thing. Um, and, uh, and so what he's saying is that I'm asking you to go do this thing to these disciples, and I want you just to know that I have prepared a way for you. And I do believe that a lot of what Jesus is asking us to do is to just trust him, to uh, read the word of God, to know what his will is overall, which we know what it is. It's the love. It's the love. That's what the will of God is. It's not to obey a, a long list of right and wrongs and, and be concerned all the time about the letter of the law, but to be concerned with the spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of love. Uh, love conquers, covers a multitude of sins. You know, uh, love... Love is enough. The Bible teaches that God is love. And so if we're doing the loving thing, we're doing what is within God's will all the time. And so trust me, Jesus is saying, and you go and you get what I've told you to get. You bring back what I've told you to bring back. You go and do what I've asked you to do. And 
leave the details up to me. So I want you to know that part of um, humility is letting go of your need to manage and my need to manage the situation or control it or direct it. Um, the things or the tasks that I want to do for, for much of my adult life, I really like working alone and, um, because in doing all the parts of it and, and not letting other people do a part in some things because, you know, I'm the only one that cared about it. Right. And, and I'm, I'm the only one that could do it right. And I could let someone else do it, but, um, but they wouldn't do it to my standard, and and you can get really lonely doing doing that, and uh, that's the opposite of humility. Um, God convinced me of that a long time ago. Uh, that is that is arrogance, and arrogance blooms from the seeds of self righteousness. Now Jesus was righteous. Jesus was perfect. And that's what it means to be righteous. Is in right relationship with God, and right relationship with God requires perfection. Please make make no mistake. That right relationship with God requires perfection. Jesus was perfect, and yet he was humble. And um, so maybe I need to understand that it's not my righteousness that puts me in right relationship with God because mine is imperfect. Matter of fact, the Bible says that my righteous deeds are like filthy rags that I would present to God. So maybe understand that I need to be humble enough to know that what I have to offer God is not enough, and that only Jesus Christ has what can be offered to God as a perfect sacrifice, as a, to bring me in right relationship with God. It requires that I take on Jesus Christ into my person, that I, that I become him and he becomes me. And we realize that that is the transaction that happened at the cross. He became sin that knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. He takes all my sin on the cross, and I believe that he did it, that he was able to do it, and I take on his righteousness. He gets the punishment that I deserve, and I get the peace and the relationship with God that he deserves. Amen. That's good. That's good. And the proper view of my righteousness in relationship to Jesus's righteousness will make me want his. It will bring me to my knees. It will make me humble. And that's key for us today. I want to read you another piece of scripture. It's from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. It's the last scripture we'll read and it's what we'll close with this morning before we have communion together. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father." So Jesus, I want you to understand that, that privilege is a term that we have thrown around in, uh, in our vocabulary these days. And if you watch the news at all, um, you'll hear people talking about privilege. And, and particularly is the term we hear is white privilege. And, uh, and <laughs> let's not get into that debate today, please. Um, that's a, we'll talk about that personally offline if you want to. But I want you to understand that there is such a thing as privilege. Uh, we all understand it. Um, there are privileges that we have, you know, uh, driving is a privilege. You don't get, you, you have to go through a program and that is granted to you by the, the state of North Carolina. In our case, it's a, a privilege to drive, uh, to obey those laws and to meet those requirements. And you get granted that privilege. Understand that Jesus had privilege. Jesus had privilege like no one has ever seen. Jesus did. He had everything. He was, he was equal with God, but would not use that to boss people around his authority, but he would use that to bless people. So there's a lesson for us that. He was smarter. He was stronger. He was a better communicator. Um, he was bolder. He was omnipotent, which means he had all power available to him. He was omnipresent, which means that he could be anywhere at any time. And he was able to, you saw some of those things, some of his miracles 
uh, encompassing him traveling places or being slipping through the midst of people who he shouldn't have been able to slip away from. He could be anywhere. He was omnipresent and he is omniscient. Uh, he knew he could know all things. And, uh, and he would know. He would know people's hearts and reveal them to them in a kind way almost every single time. And But he did not use all the tools that he had. The Bible says that he poured himself out, that he emptied himself out. And becoming like a slave in human form, he humbled himself. So Jesus got low. I want you to hear that. He got low. He made himself low. And the Bible is full of examples of people, uh, low people, people who had to get low, in order to be of use to God. I think of Joseph, who had a vision from God that he would rule over all of his brothers and even his mother and father. But Joseph found himself in a pit, sold into slavery. Family thought he was dead, in a jail cell in the house of, uh, in the house of Potiphar. And then, because of what happened in the house of Potiphar, and before he ever was lifted to the high position where he would save all of his family and really all of Israel, he had to get low. Moses, you know, became a... Hebrew slave after he was in the house of Pharaoh. I just watched the Ten Commandments maybe last night, I think it was on, and saw the story of Moses again. He was made low uh, before he was ever ever ready to serve God and deliver the people out of Egypt. Gideon said, Lord, I'm the least of my tribe. Um, he was hiding when, when God called on him and, uh, and made him a conqueror and a hero of war to deliver his people, but Gideon was low. And he knew he was low. He accepted that. And God brought him higher. And I think of Paul, who was arrogant, who was Saul, became Paul, right, literally knocked off his high horse as the head of the Pharisees, brought low for Jesus Christ, made blind, one who thought he saw all things, made blind by Jesus for a period of time, only to be have his sight restored by the hand of a Gentile, the one he would have opposed before. Paul had to be made made low. And it says that Jesus became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Even death on a cross. Obedience requires humility. Obedience requires that we would be made low. And ultimately, obedience to God requires that we go to the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, where all of his other friends abandoned him at the time when he was crucified he invites us to come there and be there with him so he can give us a gift. But it requires you to be made low. Therefore, it says, God exalted him. Jesus got low so that God could elevate him to a higher position. And I want you to, to take that key point that, that he had to go low in order to be lifted high. It says that God exalted Jesus to the glory of God. Uh, after he had been humbled to the point of death, a humiliating death. So have you ever considered that that maybe um, maybe if you made yourself low, God could bring you higher? And maybe if you've ever thought that the valley that you have found yourself walking through was necessary in order to bring you to the high place on the other side, that there was no other way to get there, there was no other way to teach you what you needed to do. There was no other way to humble you than for God to use the valley, to use the difficulty, to use the struggle, and to use the stress in order to make you low so that he could give you what he wanted to give you. You could receive it. He would lift you higher. So you got to get out of God's way. I realize that the low times and the low points of my life have been times when God just wanted to get me out of the way. And really, he wanted to get me out of his way, but he wanted to get me out of my own way sometimes too. Um, and so I'm, thank I'm always thankful, to looking back at least, I'm always thankful for the low places in my life because I know that I never would have arrived where I am now had God not brought me through those times. I want to read the last piece to you one more time. It says in verse 2, Excuse me, chapter 2 of Philippians, verse 9 through 11. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When you get low, when you get humble, 
When something good happens through you, God gets the glory. It wasn't you. It wasn't because you were smart or a good communicator or good looking or well paid or any of those things. So be, be, be cognizant that there are times when God's going to need you and ask you to be low, to be obedient in order for him to get glory, in order for him to use you in a way that only he could be the one at work and it wasn't of your own works, but it was of his. Amen. I'm going to invite you guys to join in communion this morning. If you've got communion liturgy, it's time to get that together. You and your family can join together in this. Um, those who are part of a Methodist church will understand how we normally do this, but it's, it's a reading and a response. I'm going to read both my part, and I'm going to also read um, the part where, uh, where you would respond. And so, um, you'll see that, but you, I encourage you as we go through, if you have this, to respond together with your family, and then I'll walk you through communion at the very, very end. So I'm going to begin now our service of Holy Communion, and again, I will just show you, this is my communion elements. I've got a cup of juice, and I have a uh, just a cracker this morning, and I do believe through the grace of God um, he will uh, make this be for me, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ this morning, as he will for you as well. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will and we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And the people respond in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And if you've got someone, uh, now is the time we would exchange the peace and we would get up and run around the church and hug people and kiss people and shake hands and lay a hand on them and say the peace of Christ be with you. I can't do that to you right now, but I encourage you to whoever you're with in your household uh, to give them the peace of Christ, to give them a hug to shake their hand, to give them a high five, and to let them know the peace of Christ is upon them this morning. So I'm going to give you just a moment to do that with whoever that you're with. And I'm invite you now to join in the, uh, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time had come when he, you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. 
This is the blood of my new covenant, poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here together across this internet, Lord, in the homes that we are ready to receive this communion together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with his Holy Spirit, in your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite you guys all now, if you will, to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, and what I'm saying today is that spiritually God is joining us all together in one family. And this food is one food. There's one body, one church, one, one faith one baptism in Jesus Christ, we partake of one life, the bread which we break in the sharing of the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks, and I do give thanks to God for this today, is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And I invite you now to receive communion, either for yourself, um, or you may serve one another in the places that you are, but this is the body of Christ that was given for you. This is the blood of Christ that was given for you. Amen. Amen. I pray that you've been blessed today, and I'd like to leave you with this one thing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you today. And above all things, may he give you his peace. God bless you. See you soon.